morning. Good morning. It's uh, Friday, June 15th. We're getting ready to go head to Alexandria Bay and Bolt Castle today. Yeah, we were there last year, but it's been almost a year and they do renovations all the time. Let me just show you, it's a beautiful sunny day. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna meet the curator to see what changes they've done and what they're planning for the future. So stay tuned. Hi, we are Craig and Janice and welcome to Cruising Off Duty. We love to travel and to see the world. And in the future, we plan to do that full time. That's right, we're gonna sell everything, buy a catamaran and sail around the world. And if you watched the channel last year, you'll know that I helped sell this catamaran across the Atlantic and it just reinforced the idea that this is what we wanna do. So keep watching the channel if you wanna see us sell everything and finally decide on which catamaran we're gonna live on and travel the world. But for now, we're gonna keep sailing our 35 foot Beneteau around the Thousand Islands, which is the area of the St. Lawrence that borders Canada and the United States. And to say this area is breathtaking would be an understatement. And there's also 1,600 islands to explore. So there's plenty to do and see here. And that's probably the mantra of this channel at this time in our life. Before we rush off and go explore the rest of the world, it's probably a good idea to take in the beauty of our own backyard first. And we want to take you along with us. And maybe by watching this, we'll motivate at least one viewer to go out and explore the beauty in their own backyard as well. I'm guessing no matter where you live in the world, if you just went out and explored, you'd find so much to do and see. But if not, you're always welcome to join us as we go cruising. Okay, here we are. We are motoring because there's, as you can see from the lack of waves behind us, there's absolutely no wind. So luckily we're going with the current downstream in the St. Lawrence. We're just passing Kingston behind us here. But I'll just pan around, check out the beautiful day we have, other than the lack of wind. That is nice. But Alexandria Bay is a pretty long way from Kingston. And we're gonna motor with the current probably a little over like about six knots. And it's gonna take us about five hours to get there. So yeah, we'll be there around 1 p.m. So Janice is down below making coffee and making some cereal and stuff for us. We'll eat it here at the cockpit table while we uh, slowly motor down the St. Lawrence towards Bolt Castle. See you in a bit. It's been four weeks since you called and I've been waiting here for you all along. I've been waiting here for you all along. Did you go? I wonder if you found what you're looking for. Wonder if you found what you're looking for. I hope it's not too late. I want you back here with me. We never should have said it's better this way. I'd rather be with you than someone I don't know Now it's like we're living in two separate worlds Come on back to me, say that you won't go I can't cope without you and I wanna hold you close Say that you won't go Say that you won't go We are going with a current and boy, you couldn't tell. Check out this churned up water just from the current. There's no wind. This is just current. Going with the current is beneficial, of course, going this way. We got up to about 7.9 knots of speed. 
but going the other way is a bit of a challenge. I love having that kind of current in your favor, but obviously on the way back we're going to be fighting. I'm guessing that's at least a two knot current there. Fun for now. Time flies when you're having fun. There's Bull Castle right behind us. We're already there. Five hours went by. Quick. Lots to see along the way. Some other boaters on the water, so good times. Now we just have to check into US Customs. There's an app you can use if you're not checking into a place that has a customs office, but this one does, so I don't know if they'd be happy if we just showed up and didn't walk over and talk to them, so. Anyways, go US Customs, that's next. All right, we made it onto the dock here at beautiful Hart Island where Bolt Castle is. And now we gotta, we're at the 10 minute dock for now because we have to check into US Customs right there. And then we are officially checked into the United States and then we can go wherever we want after that in the United States without having to check in again. Awesome, well, Alexandria Bay just across the way. Okay, we checked in through Customs over here. Pretty simple, got off the 10 minute dock and over to the regular dock so we can stay here the rest of the day for free. Gotta like it. Have a little lunch, because we are starved, and then go check out Old Castle, which is somewhere in behind these trees. Talk to you in a bit. We gave you a bit of the backstory last year when we visited Bolt Castle, but we'll do it again now in case you're new to the channel. Bolt Castle was built by George C. Bolt in the 1890s. It was meant to be for his wife, Louise, but unfortunately in January 1904, she died unexpectedly. George was so heartbroken he ceased construction even though the castle was probably 90% complete. The castle and all its supporting buildings were mostly vacant for all that time and became derelict with the roofs collapsing. And it was like that until 1977 when the Thousand Island Bridge Authority took it over and started restoration efforts. And from all accounts of those who came in the early years after 1977, this castle and all its other buildings were trashed. You can still see some of the upper floors where nothing's been done to restore it. You can see the graffiti with dates on the walls from the 40s and 50s. It's pretty, uh, well, nostalgic, other than the fact it's graffiti. As you can imagine, with a building like this being left vacant for decades, there was a lot of graffiti, but there was also a lot of theft. Pretty much anything that wasn't nailed down that was worth anything was stripped out of this castle. So when the Thousand Island Bridge Authority took it over in 1977, they had a monumental task. Before they could start any restoration projects, they had to do the number one thing, which was put a roof back on these buildings. I mean, most buildings had no roofs and no windows due to vandalism. As you can imagine, with a 127-room castle, it's costing millions and millions of dollars to restore this building, and at this point, they're about 30% done. Generally, the rule of thumb is the lower floors have been restored back to their pristine shape that they would have been back in 1903, and the upper floors have not yet been done. So you get a chance to look at both before and after. Now you may be wondering who's footing the bill for this millions and millions of dollars in restoration? Well, it's not the taxpayer. The Thousand Island Bridge Authority is a non-profit organization and what they do is they take the money they receive from the Thousand Island Bridge and from the entrance fees to the castle and they funnel that money right back in to do more restoration. They've done an absolutely amazing job not only inside the castle, which you'll see in a moment, but also the grounds, which are just immaculate. We're going to interview a guy named Brian Salisbury, who is in charge of the restoration efforts and has been working on the castle for 25 years. Okay, here we are inside the grounds of Bolt Castle and we're here with Brian. Hi. Hi. Why don't you tell us what you do here at Bolt Castle? Um, I'm in charge of uh, operations, maintenance, construction, and restoration here. Started in maintenance 25 years ago. Really, eh? Yeah. And uh, from there, I've moved up to uh, being in charge of contracted projects and restoration. Uh, our staff has undertaken a lot of restoration projects here yeah, and uh, sure. a lot of rehabilitation efforts as well. 25 years, yeah, wow. Things must yeah. have changed drastically in 25 years. A lot years. of changes. Yeah, because I talked changes. to people who've been here you know, as kids and they came and they were like, oh, my, the place was trashed at one point. Yeah. And you guys have really, we were here last year, as you've yeah. seen that episode, yeah. and it is beautiful. And most of the areas that we've seen are amazingly pristine, like they would have been back in like 1903. Now you still have a fair bit of the castle, you still haven't renovated Oh, we do, correct? yeah. There's only probably about a third of the castle that's actually been... Completely restored, yeah. Completely restored, and the thing is, the more we restore, the more we have to maintain. So with the staff that we have, we every year we try to at least complete one restoration project. Right. So as you're 
completing new areas and now you have to go back and you got to start doing more masonry work more window painting more floor you keep know, it looking that good everything yeah. you know so it's it probably won't be finished in my working career but we try to have a new project every year to promote repeat visitation yeah to bring people to the area I've said that on the channel I said if you haven't come in a while come back because chances are two three four years later it's a lot of areas have completely changed so definitely worth coming back to bull castle definitely more than once we came last year yeah and, and i, I came brought, uh, when my kids yeah, were small yeah and, and you said it was kids, way so different was back then extremely different yes. yeah yes. so even from last year to this year we've already heard there's some rooms that have been uh, changed and some buildings um like the playhouse has had some changes done yes yeah. uh we've got the uh, venetian room in ulster tower uh, ninety nine percent complete. Cool. We can't complete the whole room because there's three other openings into that room. They all there's a transition. So we're just working to the next transition. Cool. So but yeah, we're we've got a series of five or six rooms that we're gonna complete in Ulster Tower and so we're working, you know, trying yeah. to tie the rooms into each other as we go. Awesome. So maybe on this episode, he, Brian here will show us behind the scenes of some that are almost done that maybe the public's not into yet, but we get to see some of the almost completed rooms and maybe even some rooms that are at the very basic level haven't started yet some of the some of those oh rooms. yes definitely and yeah, we can kind of show you how the because this building was derelict for how many years oh it was at least 60 years yeah and i mean the roof collapsed in some areas the water was coming in so yeah. the there upper floors vandalism yeah and a lot of vandalism yes. yeah but the upper levels had a lot of water damage on the floors and things so uh, some of the upper rooms from last year, you could see where there's one where the plexiglass door, and we saw into a room mm -hmm. that the floor had completely rotted out. Yep. And then you see the room next to it, which has been, you know, quasi restored the floors, and it's amazing the level of work that's got to go in to make them go from yeah. <laughs> very dilapidated yep. to, uh, to, to pristine. So. And, and we're trying to do this restoration while we're open to the public as well, because we like to have the public see what we're doing. Right. You know, people are very interested in our restoration efforts. Yeah, you guys have done amazing work. We're going to go behind the gate, I think. We didn't get to go here last year. Last year we went in that entrance, but we didn't get into that. This yeah, entrance. last year we went over this little bridge yeah, into cool. that door. So Brian's going to show us this lower level that we never had access to last year. Yeah, last year this lower level had 18 inches of water inside. Wow. So you can see the water level on oh, the yeah. door. Mm -hmm. At one point here, it was higher inside. Last year's flooding was, for the viewers that don't know, was a record level of flooding. Gentlemen? Hi. Beautiful in here. For a powerhouse. Yeah. And being the sheet on the water wicked up inside. Yeah, I got wicked up and Now, was this already on the property in pretty much decent shape, or did you guys have to re- No, this was another structure that was completed in the, the mid-80s. Uh, again, fireworks burned the roof off of it, so it, it oh. sat with no roof, and the, all the stones were laying in a pile around the building. So somebody came on, partied on the island, and accidentally burned it to the ground? Well, actually, it was from a fireworks display, so I, I don't know if the fireworks were being launched from the island or from a barge, which was oh. common. Okay, we knew it as the Children's Playhouse but you say it's also called Ulster Towers. Yeah, Ulster says. Tower is the official name. The Children's Playhouse is pretty much what the tour boat company started calling it. Okay. Because it had a bowling alley and a, and a stage. And uh, But the the official name is Ulster Tower. And it, it's a replica of a castle that was, it was a temporary castle that was built on the mouth of the Rhine River um, 
back in the early 1900s, George Walt visited this, this uh, structure and he decided he wanted to build a replica of it. So this is a, a close replica of what it was. And it's very gothic, like it's very, you know what I mean, like it's... There, it, there's really no rhyme or reason. Yeah, it's almost it's like not, random. Uh, yeah. All these areas. It's almost like they didn't use an architect, they just sort of got some... I think they sat around a table and... Stone the, layer to just go, yeah, just yeah. do whatever you think is right. Use what materials were at hand and... Yeah, yeah. it yeah. does look like they just took rocks from... But but it does it does, send, does look similar to the, uh, the original Ulster Tower. We have some pictures of it. Cool. This room is what we refer to as the billiard room. Uh, we really didn't have an exact designation of what each room was uh, was actually called. Uh, we've found a bunch of old newspaper articles with descriptions of the room. We do know the lower level is the shell room, and the room that we just completed, uh, the spring is actually the Venetian room, and there is, of course, a cafe up front. Oh, a cafe. Yep, so and that's our next restoration project. Oh, okay. So that's it's not completed yet. <laughs> She's hoping you're serving coffee. <laughs> It, it had uh, pocket doors. You can see the pocket doors openings here. Oh yeah, big okay. big doors. That eh? that's yeah. that's the opening for the door. Wow. And this was the bowling alley. Yes, it was.
Okay, hey, Brian, I'd like to thanks a lot. We learned a lot on this uh, guided tour. Oh, you're very welcome. And hopefully our viewers enjoyed it as well. Yes. I hope so. So come to Bolt, everybody. Yes, there's been changes even in the That's awesome. Year. Always changes. Mm -hmm. Always changes. <laughs> Boating away from Bolt Castle. I'm gonna go over to Alexandria for the night. Alexandria Bay, sorry. Okay, that's the end of a great day. It's so beautiful today. It is so beautiful. It's so good. A good tour of Bolt Castle, and Brian was really knowledgeable. Yeah. That, well, he should be, since he's been doing it for 25 years, and he's yep. in charge of reconstruction or restoration, so excellent. And now, we're signing off from the town docks in Alexandria Bay. Yeah, it's a beautiful evening. Yes. We have our room yeah, and now uh, that's it for the, this episode. Stay tuned next episode where we're going to cover downtown Alexandria Bay, talk to the owner who helped save this village last summer when it was flooded and they had to get last minute floating docks. So, owner of what? Riley's by the bay? Yes, yes. Riley's by and the bay. And he also owns a bunch of tour boats there yes. uh, that go back and forth to uh, Bolt Castle. Yeah, he's the tour boat so owner. So hop on one of his boats as well. Yeah, we we'll might, might go over to goes. Bolt from one of his tour boats and see yeah. what it's like. Anyways, catch that in the next episode. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And until next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>